Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 163 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make our own homemade clipboards and um, the reason that we're going to do this is because I wanted a clipboard that was a smaller size um, that I could put my, I tend to collect up pages like this and this is just pages and pages. Um, of things that I have written down people's names on that have given me suggestions, what their suggestions were, or where I saw something that I'm going to, to do in one of our videos. And then what happens is I wind up losing the papers. They slide out from the paper clips and, you know, or, or I misplace them. So I thought I'm going to make myself and decorate a clipboard that will be the size and the reason that I like the little strips of paper is it sits on my mouse pad along with my mouse um, and there's enough room so that's what I wanted to do and I thought that we I would show you how you can make your own alrighty what I did was the first thing I did was I just cut a cereal box into strips and these strips are three inches wide and that's just because that's the width I wanted them you can make them any size that you want to and then I made the one that I that I'm working on um, seven and a half inches long so three by seven and a half is the one that that I'm doing here and then what I did was I cut some three inch wide strips and then I just went ahead and I cut them the width of my box and that's why they were seven inches wide I just cut where the fold was so I'm just going to use this one as my guide and I'm just going to hold that on there and you can use you can use mark it out and use scissors I I like to use my razor knife make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way um, but I like to use this just because to me I feel like I get a straighter cut that way than with my scissors I always get really choppy when I try and use my scissors on cardboard so and then I'm just going to line it up at this end down here and then put my ruler again at this end just like that and then I'm just gonna you just go through until you have five of them that's the thickness that I made and I'll show you what it's like it all depends on the thickness of your boxes and how thick you want your your board to be so once you get all of your pieces cut the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to sand them on the shiny side because the shiny side does not like to stick together does not like to stick to your glue so the glue sticks to it but just not as well so if you you don't have to take off the whole picture you just need to kind of take off the shine and rough it up so that your glue has something to grab a hold of as you're gluing it together. And being that this is something that you are going to, you know, you're going to be holding it and writing on it and, and opening and closing your clip. So you want your glue to be nice and solid on there. Once you get all of them sanded down, just on the just on the shiny side, make sure that you wipe off all of your sanding dust so that your glue will stick and then you just glue them together no you don't before you glue them together and this is just my way of doing it before I glue them together I line them all up as well as I can and I use one of our clips to hold them together and then I cut my hole for my clip now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here is my clipboard here now this is five thicknesses it's really nice and sturdy now that the glue is dry and so we are going to cut a hole now you can just take one of your clips well, let me grab another one. Oh, here they are you can just take a clip and put it over top of a board you know that's fine I don't like the way that these stick out like this because then what happens is when you go to set them down on your table they don't sit flat against your table they're they're pushed way up there 
and so then you're going to try and write on this and it's going to be bowing and so I don't like that and so I was trying to figure out how to make it more like a clipboard and so the thing that I came up with was to go ahead and cut a slit in your cardboard put half of your clip through this slit but keeping both of your pinchers whatever you call the little wire parts on the same side of the board so we're going to put that in there just like that this is now our clipboard but see now it's now it's flat because our wire piece is here our whole thing is moved forward it does give you just a slight bend in your board here but nothing like the way it was sticking out and when you set that on a table that is really pretty flat so and um, so that's just having that slit in there makes all the difference in the world and then now I made this one really short at the top because I thought I might want to put a little hook in the wall or a little nail where I could just hang this on it so I could just put it up against the wall and let that little nail go or hook go right through here and so I left it stick up a little bit um, you don't have to do that there's another one that I cut to show you that you can do the mini size you want to and um, I just have here I just have four thicknesses of cardboard and they're not glued together or sanded or anything but on this one I cut my slit down further so that my so that my wires were not sticking above my clipboard and again you know that just works really nicely um, I just had it held together while I cut my slit um, to hold my all of my pieces together but I just cut up pieces all the same size and so that works really well see just barely a little bit of a bow there and when you put that on your paper or I mean on a flat surface it really does sit nice and solid so you can make them any size you want you could use like a cereal box that's really big and make it that size so you've got like enough to hold a regular size piece of paper so that is what we're doing here and so the first thing we did was we cut our our cardboards to match I have five layers in mine. You can do as many as you want. Then we sand it off the shiny side. And then what we're going to do is the um, slits that I cut, let, let me measure them here. I'm going to put it underneath, are one and a half inches long because our little um, clips are about one and a quarter. Yep, our clips are one and a quarter inches wide. And so I cut the slit one and a half inches wide. Being that this is three inches, I am going to, I still want this one close to the top so that I get my little wire above the top. So I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch and mark it over to two and a quarter. That gives me one and a half inches and it gives me three quarters of an inch on that side and three quarters of an inch on this side. And then I'm just going to come down about a quarter of an inch you want it wide enough so that you can easily put your clip in there it doesn't hurt you know for it to be wide so you, there's no reason to make it skinny line it up and I'm going to start at three quarters of an inch and go over to two and a quarter and then I'm just going to connect the lines I don't even really need to collect the nines okay once you get well we'll do it just because so you can see there so this is what we're going to cut out just big enough to hold our clips and then I like to have the clip on there with all of them held together so that you can cut them and they don't slide around because you want that slit in the same spot on all of them and if I even when I had all five of them I clipped all five together and then you just go ahead and use your razor knife again keeping your fingers out of the way start right at the point of that line and pull it right to the end of the line and then just continue doing that until you go through all of your layers now the reason that I do this before I glue it is to me it's easier to cut before it's glued so I'm not trying to cut through that glue because it gets pretty solid um, with the glue on there you can glue it together and then I have to see where my lines going here right to there you can glue it together first and then cut your slit in there it's totally up to you however you want to do it I'm just gonna you know tell you that I like doing it 
before I glue it because I find it a little hard to cut through the glue. And I use tacky glue to glue it. Let me get this out of my way. Cut this last little bit here. And now we're just going to pop those pieces out. They were so little connected here, so I'm going to just go in and get right up to that point. I don't like to really rip them out because I want my edges to be as straight as possible without having like little fuzzies where we ripped the cardboard apart. So there's that one. And didn't quite get through that one. And there we go. So now we have our little slit that we can, once we glue it together, we can take our clip and put it right in there. If you're not sure if your slit is big enough, try it like this before you glue them all together in case you have to cut it to make it a little bit bigger. So once we've cut our slit, then we will just take tacky glue, is what I like to use. You can use whatever glue you have. And this one I made a mess of when I was sanding. I really wrinkled it up quite a bit. So I've only got two layers here right this second, but I will do three more layers so that I have five. And um, this one's going to be in the middle so that I don't have those wrinkles on the outside. But just glue it well. Make sure that you glue it really well around there and on the edges. Most important thing is to line up your little windows. If you're off a little bit over here or over here, you can always trim that at the end if it's a lot, and we are gonna sand it to have some nice edges. So if it's just a little, it doesn't matter. So you're gonna glue all five layers together just like this after they're cut, sanded with a little window here, and then stick them in some parchment and put them under a heavy book and let them sit overnight to dry because you're gonna to wanna to sand it and um, you want it to be nice and dry before you do that. I've sanded these edges and they look pretty nice. And so the only one I did not sand was here at the bottom. I'm just gonna show you, I just hold my sandpaper down and then you just run it back and forth until it looks pretty smooth. Once you get it nice and smooth, That looks nice and smooth. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just get your edges. And to get the edges, you can just take your edge kind of at a 45 degree angle and just rub it across there a couple of times. And that just kind of smooths off the edge. We'll do the other side also. Wipe off any sanding bits that we have. And we've got a little bit of our pieces are a little long here. So normally I would take the time to continue sanding this until they're all the same height or however you want to do it, all the same length. But yeah, one of my middle ones is a little bit longer. But once you do that and you get your edges sanded, whenever you sand the flat, the flat side like this, always go in and just grab your edges a little bit that takes off any excess little fibers that kind of went out and it gives you a nicer um, finish on there. And that's it. Now it's all completed and all that needs to be done is to decorate it. You can decorate it any way that you'd like to. I grabbed some painty papers here because I thought I would like to put some painty papers on there. Now the only thing is is that you don't want to put anything bumpy here because you're gonna to wanna to be able to write on it. And you don't really want anything bumpy on the back because you're gonna want it to sit flat while you're writing. So basically remember, this is like the board on a clipboard. So we want it to stay flat, but we don't want it to look like plain old, plain old, plain old cardboard. So we can just take some kind of paper and put it on there. This is a, a what you call it? <laughs> Phone book. 
forgot what you call it because you can't hardly find them anymore. We got our phone book this year and it was like this thick. It was not even as thick as a magazine. Oh, I like that one. I think that's the one we're going to pick. And that is our um, wallpaper paste paper. Side which I think I like this end down here. And so I'm going to put the glue on my clipboard to make sure that I get it covered all over and then put it on my glue or put it on my paper. If you put it on the paper and then put it on, on this piece, you might have too much on the paper or you might not have enough and it doesn't reach the, reach the edges. So always the item that you're covering is the item that you almost always want to put your glue on. Unless you're doing collage and your pieces are smaller than what you're covering, but I want to cover this whole thing with this one piece of paper, so I want to make sure that I have my glue out to the edges and all over so that my paper sticks down nice. And I'm getting very low on tacky glue by the looks of it. Not only am I getting low, but I'm getting low and I forgot to put it back in the glue stand after I used it a second ago. And then I'm just gonna put some around in the middle now that I've got it really well around my um, around my window and all the way around the edges. Well, I'm getting very low here. So there we go. This time I better put it upside down. And then I'm going to flip this over so that I can really line up in the corner so I really don't waste too much of this paper. Just lining that up all along this side and along the bottom and give it a really good press. Now this one also, once I get both sides with paper on them, or painted or whatever you decide it is that you're going to do collaged be careful about collaging on the side you want to write on because those collage pieces where they come together may make it hard to write but collaging on the back would be pretty just get that pressed down really well wipe the glue off the edges and then just trim it down crooked on this edge because of the way that I just cut it. That's what I'm going to do because that cardboard is quite thick and I'm having a hard time and it's very messed up right in this area. But trying to get in there with my scissors is not going to do the trick. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use my X-Acto knife just to run it along the edge of my cardboard. Oops, which is not, that's not good. Should have put my metal ruler on there so that I did I kind of cut into my cardboard but if your metal ruler is there that holds it so that it can't cut in and this one looks like it needs it too because I didn't have it lined up quite perfectly as I lined up the edges And the reason I'm cutting these off is because I don't want them to get all tattered. So there we go. Now, before you cover the second side, oh, I kind of really messed it up, but that's all right. 
Um, before you cover the second side, you need to cut your window in here or you'll have a hard time. You will be able to figure it out, but you'll kind of have a hard time figuring out where it's at. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is my middle right about here. So I'm going to just cut on an angle from that corner to the middle and from this corner to the middle and from this corner to the middle and from this corner to the middle just like that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to fold those pieces over like that and I'm gonna come on this side to give that a bit of a fold I'm going to use my ruler to kind of burnish that down because these ones are very very thin they're only about an eighth of an inch if our if our slit is a quarter of an inch wide then our paper right there where we cut it only half the width is only an eighth of an inch that just kind of folds that over like that And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put some glue on my edges and glue that down and that will just kind of because it rounds over the edge like that it just kind of um, finishes those edges off a little bit and so just put a little bit of glue oops there and there and along the edge of that and along the edge at the top. Now these don't have to be this long, but just because that's how long they were, I'm going to leave them that way and then I'm going to just fold this over. And I could have just cut it straight down the middle instead of cutting it like from corner to the middle. And then I would have had more paper to fold over on this part and this part. And when I grab this one, I unwind the other one. I'm just going to push this like that. it up and around that edge and then get a hold of this one just kind of pulling on it so I'm trying to glue it to that edge of that of our little window push that down and push it down nice and flat, turn it over, use my nice ruler to push this one down nice and flat. I can kind of push on the skinny sides with the edge of my ruler. And there we go. Now that's finished off nicely. You can decorate your back. You can use a marker or some ink pad to finish off your, your sides. And then you just take one of your clips and put it in there like this. There we go. And there we go. Now we have our own homemade clipboard, nice and sturdy. We can take our papers and just clip them on there like that. And these are fairly wide, so you can put quite a few 
items in there. So there we go. I hope that you enjoyed that video today. Now, you might say, okay, well, okay, I needed one clipboard. I needed one clip. What else can you do with the clip? Well, number one, they're great for holding things together. But number two, the other thing that I use them for, oh, and I should have brought over some ATC cards. Let's go ahead and turn this into an ATC card. So here we go, we have an ATC card and I like to display them. And this size clip is the perfect size clip to display an ATC card because they have a big enough bottom and a wide enough bottom that you can sit them on a shelf, line them up, and you take your ATC card and just set it in there like that and you have them all lined up on a shelf. You can see them so easily, they look very pretty. And um, so, and the little clip part holds them. Now it does cover them up with this. That does not bother me because I still, at least I've got it out and I've got it displayed. So, um, you know, I find that a very good way to do it. I have also, sometimes when I don't want them covered up for some reason, I have taken them and put them in like this. And you have to put them in first and then taken the little clip parts and taken them out on both sides. But you have to have the clips in there to get it open to get your ATC card in there because they're so strong. Otherwise, you might wreck your ATC card trying to get it in there. But you can also use it as a stand just like that. Now, the other thing is, well, you say, well, that's kind of ugly. Okay, they could be ugly, but you can paint them with fingernail polish. Now, the, this is like a, a pinky color fingernail polish, and with the black, um, it doesn't paint very well. But you could paint it white first and then paint it with fingernail polish. I forgot to paint my top edges. I usually do just leave them black, but you don't have to. And if I don't leave them black, I usually put a bit of lace right across here, just because I think that's pretty. Um, but you can take a piece of your little fabric and I've got glue all over my fingers. But you can take a piece of your fabric and glue that on there. You can take your bling trim and put bling trim on there. And that would be cute, just a line across, or the kind that we have that's um, on a spool, and put like about three of those all the way across there like that. You just don't want it on the bottom because you need your bottom to be nice and solid. Um, you could even take embroidery floss and wrap it around there and that would look really pretty, in different colors even. So there's a lot of ways you can decorate them up, and they are great, not just for ATC cards, but they also work for pictures. Um, you know, if you have a picture that you want to, to just set out, and they hold them very nicely. And again, like I said, I normally use them this way, and then just slip my cards right in there. I can slip them in and out so easily. But if I really want them to not have the wire on there, then I remove the wire after I get them put together and I actually clip them in. I don't clip them in when I use the wires. I just slide them in with the wires. And I do that again with photographs. Sometimes with a photograph, I might slide it to a point where the wire is not um, covering up something I don't want it to cover up. So that's another thing that you can do with those, which is a fun thing to do. And you're gonna have some extras you know, since your clipboard doesn't take that many in. What did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got 10 of them in this pack. So you probably don't want 10 clipboards. But there we go. I wanted to make sure that I told you that. But thank you very much for watching and stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you need to make a clipboard of your own, of a certain size, especially if you want a special size, this is a good way to do it. And um, for next week, we are going to need some little beads from the Dollar Tree. These are like the, the larger beads with the large holes in them. These are the ones that we want to get. We'll need some of our wire, our string, um, some, not string, but our embroidery floss, and some wire, and these, some glue, maybe even some bling. 
or, or little tiny strips of fabric. This is what we'll need for next week. Little beads from the Dollar Tree, the big hole beads, and the plastic ones. They don't need to be anything special. So that's what we need for next week. Thank you very much again for stopping by. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.